Winston-Salem. I'm Ed McNeil, Marketing and Communications Director for the City of Winston-Salem. Thank you for joining us here today. I want to introduce to you Dr. Candace Parker Autry uh, over uh, with the Old North State Medical Society, but there is also a local role. Doctor, if you would tell us about your, your local role here in the city. Hi, Winston-Salem. I am a your gynecologist here at Wake Forest School of Medicine, but also more proudly uh, serves as the community um, chair for the Twin City Medical Society, our local for South County Medical Society that is a, is a house for physicians as well as other providers who deeply care about um, the underserved community here locally in Forsyth right. County. Well, thank you, Dr. Autry, for being with us today. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. We're closing in on it. Some folks are trying to figure out how do they do it safely. They don't want to lose Thanksgiving. This is uh, kind of a time where folks do want to have that feeling of, of some comfort, and, and uh, it's been a crazy kind of year. So how do we put together a safe visit to Grandma's house? Yeah. You know, that's a difficult question, Ed, um, Mr. Um, McNeil. However, um, you know, based on CDC recommendations, there are some strategies that we know have worked well to keep us safe, as well to as well as to keep our family members safe. Let's talk about those really briefly. So we've all we've all heard about washing your hands. So you know, wash your hands before interacting with people and wherever you go. Um, it's important right now, I think, to minimize our interactions with large crowds. And that's going to be with or without a mask. So, um, you know, making sure that you're you're only participating in very small group interactions at this, you know, before Thanksgiving. I think it's really important to always wear a mask, you know, with interactions with other people, and to um, stay within the guidelines of social distancing if possible. Ways that you can prepare to go to Grandma's house. One, you know, you want to consider the health of the people who you're going to be around. Obviously, we, we know now that the health of all of our older adults, those with any kind of immunocompromised um, conditions, uh, those who are at baseline are just not well or not highly functional, those are the people who are most concerned about getting COVID-19. And therefore, um, ensuring that as much, as much as possible that you have no symptoms of a cold uh, before visiting is going to be really critical. In addition, I think it may be a good idea to go ahead and get a COVID-19 screening test. Most of those tests are available and you will be able to get results within 48 to 72 hours. You know, that will reassure you as well as your family members that at that time, you're not carrying COVID-19. Obviously, there is a time interval between when you get tested and when you get your results. And in that time frame, you can still be exposed. You can still, um, exposed to the virus, uh, respiratory droplets, um, of course, and you can still technically get the virus. So I would say in addition to getting screening before you visit your family members, also not being um, afraid of making this a, a mask wearing Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to miss the point that uh, even if you go in somewhat confident that you don't have it, you still need to protect yourself. So uh, I appreciate you sharing that. Let's talk about on the, I guess, uh, after that, after Thanksgiving, perhaps some people may be trying to get back into their workplace. Um, we have a situation here at my work where we have an employee who is traveling. They know they're going to be around someone who's medically fragile. And so they've gone out of the workplace um, uh, 13, 14 days ahead of time. And then when they come back, their plan is, again, to stay out of the workplace 13, 14 days before they come back. Uh, would you speak to that strategy, please? Yes, I think it's very, I think that's a, that's a good strategy overall. It's um, very conservative. It follows CDC guidelines. Um, and I think if we add COVID-19 testing within that quarantine period, that would be really reassuring for uh, that individual as well as the family members in the workplace um, in their workplace community that that person's not carrying or trying help, helping to transmit COVID-19 with their planned travel. Excellent. Uh, Old North State Medical Society has gone um, to great lengths, it looks like, to provide testing throughout the community. And these are testing sites where people uh, can go get a test if they, they don't have any symptoms. That's, uh, and I know you'll speak to this, but uh, just 
being able to use your testing events to kind of help them build out um, taking care of themselves. Would you talk about how uh, you all have put together this testing effort in our community? We are basically we are identifying um, underrepresented, underserved communities locally here in Forsyth County, where you would be able to come. You don't have to pre-register. You will um, be quickly entered into our registration system. We per perform the nasal swab testing. So this is a this is a very comfortable test where we basically take a, take a small Q-tip. It's placed in the near the, the near of your, of your nose. We, it takes a total of 15 seconds to do it max. And um, those test results go directly to the lab and we are able to contact you to give you those results within 48 hours typically. What does a person need to bring with them if they're coming to get a test? Do they need to bring insurance, identification? What do they need to bring? It's a great question. So right now we are hoping to get as many people as possible tested in our community. That means that we are trusting that you are going to be able to self-identify. Um, you do not have to bring your driver's license or any picture ID. You do not have to bring any health insurance information because currently the cost of testing is being covered by a federal grant. We do ask information about insurance, and that's mostly to capture um, demographic information to ensure that we are targeting the, the communities and individuals that are underrepresented in testing at this time. So mostly you have to bring yourself. Yeah, yeah, great. And, you know, another big point I think that I've, I'm hearing some is, yeah, we're in November and we're closing in on Thanksgiving, but it's not too late to get a flu shot. There can still be some value in people pursuing that again to try to protect themselves. Would you speak to that? Yes, um, you know, I, I think that if you are an individual that normally gets the flu shot, I think it's, you know, we are. Um, you know, all of us in the healthcare community understand that um, it's likely that viruses like the flu can spread this fall and winter. And we are we are always promoting getting the flu shot if that's something that you normally would, would get. Flu vaccines have been shown to reduce the risk of flu as well as hospitalization and as well as death in some individuals, especially the, especially those who are otherwise ill and those who are otherwise elderly. So um, while a mask will help prevent um, COVID-19 and can help, help some, sometimes decrease the, the um, risk of getting the flu, we have a vaccine that's been well established for the flu. And, and um, I think that getting the flu vaccine would be important to protect your health as well as the health of others. Uh, great. Well, thank you, Doctor, so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, again, Winston Salem, Doctor Candice Parker Altry from right here at uh, Wake Forest Baptist, as well uh, a representative for the Old State Medical Society. So, thank you again, Doc, for joining us. We appreciate that. Thank you for inviting me.